What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video and today we're going to be going over the Necromancer Healer. So the Necromancer Healer is actually in a pretty interesting spot right now. They are not quite as popular as Temporal Healers or Warden Healers, but the tools that they have in their toolkits actually do lend themselves to be used pretty often, uh, actually more often than you would think in endgame content. Uh, so we'll be going over why that is throughout the course of this video here along with all the other sort of skills as well as some philosophies of healing. Necromancer healers are kind of, again, a very weird sort of healer here, but they are still very effective and like I mentioned earlier, they're actually a little bit more popular in endgame trials than you might think. Now in terms of gear, we will not be going over any gear for this video. That is reserved for a gear video, which you can find up in the upper right hand corner right around now. So if you want to know what gear you should be running as a healer, I recommend pausing this video, checking out that gear video, and then coming back here once you have finished watching that video. For this video, we're going over skills as well as kind of what sets necromancer healers apart and the philosophy behind healing in general. So let's go ahead and get started here first with skills. So for our front bar, this is the Restoration Staff bar. We have Illustrious Healing, Renewing Undeath, Combat Prayer, Mortal Coil, Energy Orb, and I have Reviving Barrier here as an ultimate, but there are several ultimates that we can flex out here. In terms of which abilities here are flex abilities, I would say that Renewing Undeath is one flex ability as well as Mortal Coil as well. You don't necessarily need to run Mortal Coil. The heal from it is actually not particularly powerful, um, consider, uh, at least compared to other heal over times. Um, but it's really just there for the additional passive that you get, the additional healing done passive. Uh, so that's really why you would run Mortal Coil. So you can also just swap out Mortal Coil because overhealing in this game is actually fairly easy to do. So you don't necessarily need the additional healing done modifier here. On the back bar, have Agony Totem, more on that in a little bit, Elemental Drain, Blockade of Storms, Intensive Mender, Overflowing Altar, and Aggressive Horn. So really quickly going over our bars. For the front bar here, obviously we need to run Illustrious Healing. This is going to be one of our primary heal over time abilities. Uh, I do believe that my CPs are a little bit messed up right now. They're not healer CPs, so the tooltips that you see here are going to be a little bit on the lower side, just because they don't have the correct CP set up right now. Renewing Undeath, this is a flex spot for any sort of burst heal that you might want to use. So I like Renewing Undeath as a kind of quasi-burst heal, mainly because it's an AoE heal. But there are other options when it comes to burst heals for Necromancers. Your class burst heal, single target burst heal, is known as Resistant Flesh. So it heals one person in front of you for a certain amount of health, but it also applies Myron Defile to yourself for four seconds. You can cleanse Myron Defile off of yourself using an ability like Expunge and Modify, for example. Um, but that's kind of one of the weird things with Necromancer Healers. You do sort of apply a Myron Defile on yourself, very similar to Nightblade Healers where Healthy Offering applies a small dot on you when you use it. Uh, unlike Healthy Offering though, obviously you cannot stack multiple Myron Defiles on you, you just end up renewing the overall duration. It's kind of up to you which one of these two you'd like. Again, I personally like renewing Undeath, mainly because it is an AoE heal and it's also a little bit cheaper as well. Now, one thing that is unique with Necromancer abilities is the fact that some abilities, like Renewing Undeath, or the other Morphin Renewing Undeath, and Resistant Flesh have, or I should say, Blood Sacrifice, have a special effect whenever you consume a corpse near you. Now, with this particular setup here, the main corpse that we're going to be making is going to be from Intensive Mender every 8 seconds. So, any sort of ability that has uh, consumes a corpse, uh, you will need to kind of target the ability onto where the corpse is in order to make the use of it. Or like in the case of Blood Sacrifice, you just need to have the corpse next to you. Now, Intensive Mender is pretty much stays at your side and doesn't really move too much. So in terms of corpses, don't anticipate getting off that secondary corpse effect very often with any of your Necromancer healer abilities. It does require you to kind of, again, take be very close attention to where all the corpses are again, the only corpse that you will be creating, at least with this setup, would be from Intensive Vendor. So 
this corpse is not going to be in an ideal position all the time when it dies. So just keep that in mind. You don't anticipate getting the secondary effects. So for example, if you're doing undeath, if you consume a corpse, you remove up to three negative effects. If you have the other morph, and during undeath, you can consume multiple corpses in order to basically boost the heal over time component. So you kind of have to just be aware that you're not going to get the secondary effect very often. In trash fights, yes, you're going to have a lot of these secondary effects going off. But for boss fights with no adds where you can't get any corpses, don't anticipate getting the secondary effect. So really just judge it based on the initial hit, initial effect, not necessarily the corpse effect here. Other potential uh, sort of abilities you might want to run. So I already mentioned Mortal Coil is really just there for the healing done modifier. Not really all that impressive. You could also go with Braided Tether too, which still has that healing done modifier, but it's a little bit more useful than Mortal Coil. Mortal Coil might help you manage your stamina a little bit better. It does give you some stamina back if you're using a set like Martial Knowledge, which does require you to have below 50% stamina. So it does help you... You do have to kind of pay attention to that side of things if you are running martial knowledge. Uh, but So you can use the other morph, Braided Tether, which is a little bit better just because it also heals allies around you as well, rather than just allies that are within between you and the corpse there. Uh, if you want, you can use the other morph of Intensive Mender, Spirit Guardian, but you will not get quite as many corpses out because it does last for a longer period of time. But I personally prefer running Intensive Mender here. One interesting ability that you might want to run is going to be called Necrotic Potency. Basically grants you ultimate for every corpse that you have around you. So for a trash fight, if you hit Necrotic Potency, very, very likely that you're going to get over 60 ultimate or so, which really helps bump up your Warhorn uh, cooldown. So this is one potential use of running something like Intensive Mender. You can't necessarily get the secondary heal effect off of, for example, on Renewing Undeath. You could just hit Necrotic Potency and just get an additional 6 ultimate back for using Intensive Mender. Other potential abilities here. So in terms of replacing this Reviving Barrier Morph, you could, if you'd like, use either Morph of Reanimate, which is the Resurrection Ultimate. It's a very, very costly ultimate, and I personally don't recommend kind of planning on using it, because obviously to use it, people have to die. As a healer, your job is to not let people die. So if you are using this ultimate, then you've kind of already failed your job as a healer. So while you could slot it for things like progression stuff, I personally would shy away from it just because it basically relies on the premise that you are already failing, which kind of isn't something you really want to encourage in your group. Now, in terms of other abilities... First, for Restoration Staff abilities, both Radiating Regeneration and Healing Ward are both pretty nice abilities to have. Radiating and Regeneration for the additional heal over time, which is pretty decent. Healing Ward has some niche uses here. You already have a class Burst Heal, which kind of was what Healing Ward fits around. Healing Ward is mainly used then if you're running the Black Rose Prison Staff for the Major Vitality bonus. That's really the only reason why you to run Healing Ward. Uh, the shield itself is not particularly strong, and it, while it is a fairly decent burst heal, uh, it is more expensive than your class burst heals, and also, in my opinion, just not quite as useful, not quite as strong. You can go with Siphon Spirit or Quick Siphon if you'd like for a source of minor lifesteal. Personally, I prefer getting minor lifesteal from Overflowing Altar because it also provides a Blood Feast synergy. But there is an argument to be made for Siphon Spirit for the additional minor Magicka Steel. So if you don't want to run, for example, Elemental Drain, you could just run Siphon Spirit instead. So you get the minor Life Steel and you get the minor Magicka Steel that you would normally get from Elemental Drain if you were to run this ability here. So speaking of Elemental Drain, you don't necessarily need to run Elemental Drain. Usually only one healer or support roles. Tanks can also run it as well. Uh, one support role would be running Elemental Drain, so you might not necessarily need to run this. So you do have an extra flex spot on the back here if you so desire. While we're on the back bar, I should point out Agony Totem. This is one of the reasons why Necromancer healers are kind of in the same boat as Sword healers, in that they are pretty decent, but not really at the top. And that reason is Agony Totem provides a unique synergy called pure agony so that helps out your stamina dps who are running the kestis in order to get better major slayer uptime and if you're able to get this on the tank you'll also be able to provide some additional alkash uptime for the tank so really really great here um so for agony totem specifically you do need to be uh, basically in the group in order to provide that minor protection and then minor the pure agony synergy is sort of an aoe 
minor vulnerability. So it actually is pretty nice uh, sy uh, synergy that you are going to want to run as a necromancer healer. If you ever need a shield, you can always run either morph of uh, Nullment, so either Harness Magicka or Dampen Magic. It's kind of up to you which one you want to go for. Uh, in terms of other abilities, under the Fighter Skilled line, you have a ability known as Ringer Preservation or some additional minor protection. Uh, so I personally wouldn't necessarily run this. Uh, you have minor protection through Agony Totem. Um, Circular Protection itself has pretty much a slightly smaller radius than Agony Totem, but it also has a heal associated with it. So if you need a little bit of additional heal, it's not a very strong heal because it does scale off of stamina and weapon damage. But if you want to heal along with the minor protection and you want to use stamina rather than magicka, then you can run Ring of Preservation rather than Agni Totem for the minor protection. You also will be losing out on the synergy from Agni Totem, so keep that in mind if you're deciding to make that trade-off there. Under the Sigic Order line, either Morph of Mend Wound, Symbiosis, or Mend Spirit are pretty interesting. So this has the potential to be one of the strongest uh, moves in the game in terms of heal per second done uh, with that heavy attack. The actual ability itself is a little bit weird. It's basically a toggle ability, so it basically turns your light attacks into healing attacks instead. So it basically means you can't target the enemy, so you won't necessarily be able to light weave your uh, attacks on a boss or, a tr uh, or an ad. Instead, you'll have to weave them by hitting your allies. Um, so this does have a couple of interesting niche uses. So for example, if you're running Hollow Fang's Thirst, which procs off of heals and damage, by using Mend Wounds, you are basically limiting it yourself to procs only within the group, which might help getting those procs into group in the first place. Obviously, if it procs on the boss, it's not a 100% guaranteed chance that your DPS will be able to make use of that proc. So a couple of interesting niche uses for Mend Wounds here. It is an ability I would keep in the back of your mind and in the back of your toolkit just in case you want to run it. You're going to want to have all of the Undaunted skills unlocked. So for Blood Altar, I prefer Overflowing Altar for the Blood Feast Synergy, the stronger synergy. Shadow Silk, you're going to want to have this for the Black Widow Synergy. While it has lost some power over a couple of patches, it's still a pretty decent synergy. It's a free synergy to help with Alcestia's uptime and Alkosh uptime, so you might as well run it. There will be some fights where you're going to have to taunt adds in order to pull them in for certain stacks, in which case you're going to want to run Inner Rage. Bone Surge is great for the mind of vitality that you get from the synergy, so definitely a ability that I would keep in the back of your head. Uh, really good for certain fights like Cloud Rest, where you might need the major vitality across multiple people here. And obviously Energy Orb for the heal, as well as the Combustion Synergy. Under the Alliance Warline, or I talked about Aggressive Warhorn, this is the best support ultimate in the game. And then under the support line, you have Efficient Purge. So remember that even though Renewing Undeath does have a purge associated with it, you need to consume a corpse, which you might not always have. So for a more consistent purge, you can run Efficient Purge instead. Already we talked about potentially running Roughing Barrier as an ultimate. The advantage of running Roughing Barrier or having Purge on your bar but not using it is the fact that you do have a Magicka Aid passive down here which gives you some Magicka Regen. So I got 10% additional Magicka Regen right now just for having Barrier slotted here. So those are a bunch of different skills that you can run as a Necromancer Healer. So again, in terms of your front bar, the, the abilities that I would say you're going to want to have are going to be Illustrious Healing, Comet Prayer, and Energy Orb here. Mortal Coil and Renewing Undeath are flex spots, but I would say that one of these should be taken up with a Burst Heal. So something like Life Admit Death, any of either of the two morphs, or Render Flesh, either of the two morphs. Uh, those would be like options for a Burst Heal, or you can do something like Healing Ward uh, if you want to run that ability instead. Then on your back bar... Definitely want to run Intensive Mender and Block Aid. Block Aid for the enchant on your back bar. And then if you need to, run Elemental Drain. And then you have two additional flex spots here. So for example, Overflowing Altar can be replaced with any other ability. As can Agony Totem if you don't necessarily need to run it. You might already have enough synergies for maximum Lacassis and Alkosh uptime. Or you might not necessarily need the minor protection. So you might not always need Agony Totem. So you can treat this as a flex spot as well. So in terms of how to heal, so for those of you guys who are coming over from other MMOs where you might have healers, healing in this game is a little bit different from some MMOs. Not all of them, but some of them. 
healers and tanks in this game are kind of fall into more of a support role rather than a raw healing role. While it is important to obviously heal your allies and make sure they don't die, a large part of your job is also going to be supporting your DPS and helping them achieve pretty much as much DPS as they possibly can. This is going to be coming from things like buffs and debuffs from your sets as well as your abilities. So an example of a buff that's coming from a set would be Olorime. You're getting Major Courage from Olorime. An example from a debuff that you would get from your class would be Agony Totem. You're getting minor vulnerability if people are able to activate that synergy. And of course, activating synergies will help proc Lakestes, using up like energy orbs for the combustion synergy, will return resources back to the group in order to help out the sustain so they can use a light attack rotation for a longer period of time, which will improve overall DPS. So that's really the crux behind what separates out the good healers from the great healers. You're taking a look at the buffs, debuffs, what they're able to offer, what their uptimes are on various buffs and debuffs. So for example, a very good healer should be able to maintain 90% or higher uptime on Comet Prayer for that minor berserk. So as you're getting started with healing, first, obviously, your job is to heal. Uh, don't get me wrong, even though buffing and debuffing is a very, very important role for a healer, very important job for a healer, you still are a healer so you still want to make sure you're keeping everybody alive so that does involve obviously getting some situational awareness down uh, knowing the mechanics of the fight knowing when damage is incoming arena-wide unavoidable damage so you can anticipate that damage burst and get your heal over time started so you don't necessarily have to burst heal and people don't have to res other people but once you kind of get to know the fight and know when to heal what to heal etc that's when you want to start focusing on maximizing overall buffs and debuffs so as a necromancer, kind of what you want to do is you want to make sure to maintain at all times your intensive mender. Don't renew it early. You're going to want, if you do renew it early, it has to be after four seconds. So that way uh, you get the corpse going. Because uh, again, there are some abilities where you might be able to use that corpse in order to get some secondary effect. Block A, you always want to have down for the additional uh, enchant procs, obviously. But from there, for me personally, I just like to layer down my hots as best I can. So obviously put down one spring, you put down an energy orb from running radiating regeneration, make sure that, that is up on however many people as I can get it on. And from there, it's just kind of managing my buffs and debuffs. So making sure I comet prayer every eight seconds to get the minor berserk going. If I'm using an, uh, a set like IA or Zen, uh, or martial knowledge, making sure that those debuffs are active at all times. So it's a lot of sort of balancing out, uh, taking a look at how your buff timers are going, your debuff timers, and making sure they don't drop uh, for long periods of time. So if you're on PC, for example, I would highly recommend getting some sort of buff debuff tracker, raid buffs, strendars, action duration reminder, in order to you know start practicing getting your buffs and debuffs as high as you possibly can get them. Now, I am not a healer main. I don't really heal very often. So uh, down in the description below, I do have links to YouTubes and Twitch for people who uh, are healer main. So feel free to ask them any specific questions about Necromancer healers. Tabata in specifically that has played on a Necromancer healer in high-end PvE content. So I would highly recommend uh, kind of directing any sort of questions you have for Necromancer healers towards Tabata. Although all the other... Uh, content creators that i have below are still are very good resources so that is it for this video hope you guys found this informative if you guys have any questions about the build again there are some content creators down below that you can ask questions on their youtube channels or their twitch or you can ask them here in the comment section below i'll try to answer them to the best of my ability but if i don't have an answer for you right away i will try to find the correct answer from people who actually know what they're talking about when it comes to healing but again hope you guys found this video informative and i'll see you guys in the next dungeon